Hello, hello, hello. Pastor Kenton Jones here. Uh, another session here at Free Life. Uh, God has instructed me to talk about grief uh, in this session, uh, overcoming grief. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I am from a place called Deerfield Beach, Florida. And um, I, grew up, I grew up there, came to Atlanta, Georgia to go to college at the age 18. And I pretty much been, been here ever since. Got married, got, uh, we have four kids and, and have a wonderful life here in Atlanta. Um, my hometown is where my parents uh, lived and the, my dad was a pool plasterer. My mom was a school teacher. They're both in heaven. And my dad went home to be with the Lord in 2010. And so since 2010, I have been battling grief. Um, to me, uh, and then, then my mom went to be home, uh, be home uh, well, she went to heaven in 2017. So seven years after my dad passed, my mom passed, and it seems like grief had gotten just more heavy, more heavy on my spirit. Until recently, I have divorced grief. Praise God. I have divorced grief. I, my mind has been changed. My spirit has been renewed. And God told me to come on and share a couple sessions about grief and overcoming grief with you. And so uh, I'm not gonna do it all in one session. I'm gonna do it over three sessions. And this is the first session. Um, and so I'm overcoming grief, I had to renew my mind. One of the things I had to renew is I had to renew my mind in the word of God. So first of all, I wanna just start reading some scriptures about our promises from, from God when it comes to grief, when it comes to sorrow, when it comes to pain, um, you know, uh, there is physical pain to whereas you can go to a hospital and maybe take some medicine or uh, get some bandages to, to help physical pain. Uh, but there's nothing that a doctor can do for emotional pain and psychological pain. Sometimes that they can, you know, you can talk to somebody and talk things through. But I would suggest to start with the word of God. So that's what we're going to start today with the word of God. Uh, overcoming grief. Uh, a lot of times people want to, you know, one step, two step, three steps to overcoming grief. I would tell you even before I start reading the word of God that in his presence is where you're going to get fullness of joy. All right. His presence will fill all the gaps that are empty in your life, in your mind, in your spirit. All right. And so let's start with our first scripture. And we have a, a lot of scriptures. And um, I want to start with uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 8. 2 Corinthians 5 and 8. It says, we are confident, I say, and would rather to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. The... Uh, King James Version, which is the one I study the most, says uh, we are confident to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. And so we understand that if your loved one um, was a person that had a relationship with God, regardless of what you think that relationship was, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so um, I feel that, you know, through faith, that's why uh, the, the, the scriptures says that we walk by faith and not by sight. We can't necessarily go by what we see, but we have to believe that our, our loved one had somewhere in their life where they made a covenant with God and they are in heaven. Once you make a covenant, uh, a covenant with God is not based off behavior. My kids are my kids based off of our covenant. They, they share my blood, all right? They are my kids. They are my seed. So it's not based off uh, their behavior that makes me their father. I am their father based off covenant and through blood. Amen. And so therefore, uh, their behavior doesn't dictate my love for them and my provision for them. Same thing with God. Uh, if they have made Jesus their Lord and Savior, even as a kid, and maybe they went astray and, and lived a certain lifestyle, uh, they are still candidates 
for the kingdom of God or, the, uh, or to, have, uh, to be in heaven and be present with the Lord. So a lot of times you say, man, my, my loved one was this or my loved one was that and they didn't live worth nothing. They didn't come to church. No, don't take that attitude. Uh, you walk by faith and not by sight. You have to believe that they are sitting at the feet of Jesus. Amen. All right. <clears throat> the next scripture I want to share is uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, chapter 4 and verse 13. Brothers and sisters, we do not want to be uninformed about those who are in death or asleep in death. So that you will not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. So we don't we don't grieve like 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 people who don't know Jesus. All right. We don't grieve like the hopeless people. All right. We understand that if they are in heaven, they are all right. If they're at the feet of Jesus, they are all right. And this is the process that I had to go through to know, man, they are in a mom is in a better place. Dad is in a better place. Um, you know, it would be selfish of, of, of me to want to keep them here when they want to be at the feet of Jesus. They've raised their, the kids. They've done their work on earth and they want to go. And if they want to go, then I support that. Praise God. And so I, I don't grieve like I have no hope, like I don't know what's going on. All right. I don't grieve like I feel like they're in. A, I don't know where they are. We've lost them. No, I know exactly where they are. They are in heaven. They're at the feet of Jesus. They are celebrating there. They are. They are perpetually living in an, in amazement. Glory be to God. And so I have to honor God's word over my emotions. Now, this is this is a challenge. This was a challenge for me. All right. I knew all the while I knew what the word said, but it was still a challenge to me because I couldn't pick up the phone and call mom. I couldn't pick up the phone and call dad. I couldn't go through the process of of when I have issues. And I think, you know what? I know that it was more of a selfish uh, issue of what they did for me and how they comforted me. And when I got in trouble, mama sent money. And when I got in trouble, mama interpreted dreams and she prayed for me every day. And it was it was more so of, man, all the things that you've done for me. Now I don't have those things. Now what do I do? Who's going to pray for me? Who's going to make me German chocolate cake? <laughs> uh, so just different selfish things that I had in my life that I had to grow up. Um, and I had to uh, really uh, mature into divorcing grief. Now, I'm going to share more in details in, in other sessions, but I want to go right to uh, my process of healing through this situation. Man, for the first three years uh, after my dad passed away, maybe, maybe even four years, uh, first of all, I didn't I didn't really grieve right away. You know, um, I remember that I was coming from Nashville. I had a business appointment that I was uh, coming from. And in between driving from Nashville, Tennessee to Atlanta, Georgia, it's like a three hour, four hour drive. Um, I heard about the passing of my dad and I just told the guys to pull over and I just got out and start walking. And I'm walking down the highway. Uh, and my guys are just kind of behind me driving the truck. I never forget this. And I'm walking and I, and I just say, God, you know, I, I probably walked for like 10, 15 minutes just on the highway. And I know I look real crazy to a lot of people passing by. Um, and then all of a sudden I was like, all right, God, accept my dad into heaven. I worship you. I praise you for his life, for what he instilled in me. Uh, and I'm going to go honor him. And so I cried a little bit and then I kind of just got back to the truck and kind of soldiered up a little bit, uh, wiped my tears and, and went home to uh, take care of my dad. And I was trying to be such a soldier that I didn't, I guess, cry enough or let it out enough. So what happened was instead of exploding or letting it come out, it went inward and mines imploded. And so me trying to be strong for my sisters, trying to be strong for my mom, uh, trying to be strong for our family, uh, tried to take the 
the, the, I guess most of the sorrow on me, like put it on me, put the pain on me. I got it. You know, uh, I was honored to take care of the, 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 the funeral costs. Let me take it. Let me talk to the to the funeral people. I got it. Y'all relax. I got it. And that process, I probably should have divvied that up between my sisters because they were uh, strong enough to handle it. But I wanted to do it myself as the as the. You know, the son, I, I wanted to do it myself. And so uh, after the funeral, you know, we put that to rest. Uh, we celebrated him. We had a, a little, uh, he did music. We had a little album release party. He never had an opportunity to release his project. Um, and so uh, we put his music together and gave his CD away and and had a track listing for him at his home going. It was, it was awesome. Gave everybody his music. And so... Uh, and so when that was over, you know, most people kind of go back to their lives. But that immediate family, uh, the grieving process kind of starts right there to whereas it's, it's over. See, when, when, it, when it happens and the home going is happening, so many people give you attention, so many people give you love. My family had a fish fry. They came over and cooked. And, and uh, a lot of things to keep you just emotionally intact for a while, for a week, for a week or two or, or what have you. But when it was all over and everybody left, then you're there alone to deal with the grief. And so when I came back to Atlanta, uh, I had to go directly to a ministry engagement. I had to go uh, perform somewhere, I believe it was in Dallas. And I just went to work. I went back to work. And man, over time, in my mind, my dad's home going was still replaying in my mind. His, his, his casket was still open in my mind. Uh, and I had never closed it. All right, so when everybody had went on, this thing was still in my mind. I could still see it clear as day. And, um, and I grieved every day over my dad. I grieved, I grieved, I grieved. Uh, my dad had a stroke and I was at a ministry engagement uh, to whereas I was on uh, a cruise. And when I talked to him, he said, man, I'm good, I got it. Uh, you don't have to come back home. And the, pro the, the, the decision to stay, he kind of pushed me to stay man, do what you do. I got this. I'm good. I'm tough. I got it. Um, he didn't pass away right away. He passed away 45 days later. So I had a chance to come home and spend some time with him. But my decision to stay on that boat, I, I replayed that decision and, and was thinking, man, what would have happened if I would have gotten off? You know, and man, I should have been there for mom. I should have been, man, I should have, you know, and should have, would have, could have kept playing through my mind through all of these situations of things that I could have done better. What, what could have changed and stuff like that. And so it played, it played, it played, it played. And, and, and then the voice of wisdom that I'm so used to hearing and, you know, I, I, I didn't hear anymore. And, and my dad you know, we had a singing group when I was growing up. So every time I do music or anything musical, which is my life uh, in ministry, he was a pastor as well. I'm thinking about him. And it's like, wow, I cannot shake this grief, you know. And so I had grief and honor entangled, which means I felt like I was honoring him because I kept grieving him. And I kept I felt like, you know, if I. Uh, uh, went away from that emotion and went away from that feeling and just said, Dad, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. Uh, you know, I got to move on. That I couldn't, I didn't want to make that decision because I felt like just grieving was honor. And it started to take a toll on me emotionally and physically. And, and you could literally see the cloud of grief over my head. Like you can see it on my body. You can see it in my eyes. Some of my closer brothers could see it. Um, recently, I, I got a welcome back text from one of my brothers to say, man, I can see that you, you're out of that. And so, uh, but through that process, and I, and I remember going to my living room and saying, dad, I, I gotta go. 
And this is before my mom had passed. I got to go, man. And I cried, I cried, I cried. And I'm talking about this is some four years after he had passed. And I cried in my living room, and then I, I, I just tried to put it to sleep and, and move on. And I slowly tried to move on from it. And so um, then my mom passed, 2017. And the process of, of it imploding, it, it happened again. It's like I'm, I just got over dad, now you're gone and... and Oh my God, you know, my, my voice of reason, my mom was my prayer warrior. Uh, she was my confidant. I, I talked to her all the time. She always encouraged me in everything I do and just not to have that, that voice still was like, oh my God. And so it was like I was out and then I got pulled back into grief. And this time it came, seemed like five, six times heavy, more heavy. And I remember me having to make decisions, I, I, I read, um, and, I, and I don't have that scripture pulled up. That's one of the scriptures that I wanted to pull up. I forgot to pull up. But it was the story of Jesus getting ready to go, to, uh, to, to go and, there, uh, and there were people coming up to him with different things and issues about going with him. And one of the guys said, Jesus, please allow me to go bury my father. And he said, let the dead bury their dead. And I, and I thought that that was one of the coldest, most ice cold scriptures that I had ever read. That Jesus, how, how could you say, let the dead bury their dead? And, and, and I was like, man, that's just cold. And, 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 and through all of this, I remember uh, even when I was dealing with it. Uh, in 2018, my mom passed in 2017, my, and I'm dealing with it in 2018, um, and, and, and I can faintly hear my wife saying, you have us, you have us, you have us. And, and, and she said it, but it did not register until probably six, seven, eight months later. Well, it, you know, I just want you to know that you have us, you have, you have, you have me, you have the kids, you have us. And in my mind, I'm like, uh, initially when she said it, I was like, well, you, you don't understand. You have your parents. You, you have, you know, uh, uh, you, 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 you could go and see them. Matter of fact, they moved from Dallas, Texas, where she's from, and they live like 10 minutes away from us, literally. And so I just felt like she didn't understand, but I never, dis you know, I, I, it was just in there, just, and then it, one day, it came back up in my spirit what she said, and it was loud. It was like, you have us. And when I started to kind of come out of this, I realized that there were more things living that needed me than those things that were dead. And so um, I documented this process. Um, my, my video, Show Me Your Glory, is a song about my mom and, um, and it's just saying, Lord, you got to show me something because, you know, pretty much, you know, we lived our lives through our parents as far as our relationship with God. And now that my parents are not there, you, 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 you know, I know you're my mom's God and I know you're my dad's God. But now I got to see this thing for myself because I have no more training wheels or, or anything to guide me. I need you. Praise God. I need you. So I was saying, show you got to show me your glory. You got to show me this thing, you know, and God did. And so in the process, I went to my mom's uh, grave site and my dad's grave site, which is uh, in the same spot. And I said, Mom, Dad, I love y'all, but I got to leave this place, uh, this place of grief. Grief is, is trying to, what, what in my life, was trying to take the place of the Holy Spirit. Um, grief was trying to, uh, 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 situations like this will come up where I will always bring up the death of my parents so that somebody can give me some type of consolation, will console me. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah it, it happened, you know, 10 years ago, but, but yeah, man, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, and I will always kind of bring it up, bring it up before songs, bring it up in ministry so that, so that it seemed like I would get an emotional response that, that, that. The Holy and, and I was trying and grief in my life was starting to take the place of what I needed the Holy Spirit for. 
that grief was starting to be my comforter, that I would always take that grief around so people could say, man, I'm sorry about your mom, sorry about your dad, or sorry about the place you're in. And, and, and so my joy was gone and my comfort was grief. And so the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my, your strength. The, the, the Bible says that he'll give you beauty for ashes. The Bible says in the fullness, uh, 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 there's joy in uh, there's fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord. There's fullness of joy. And so I, I had traded that with grief. And so I needed the Holy Spirit to invade. My one, my my spirit had to be filled again with the Holy Spirit. All right. Another thing is I had to speak his word and I had to say grief. I divorce you. Grief, I divorce you. I am no longer in covenant with you. I, I no longer get comfort from you. I get my comfort from the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Fill me up from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet in the name of Jesus. And I do not depend on grief for any comfort, any consolation. I depend on your spirit. And so in that process, I went to, I went to my mom's uh, uh, grave site, went to my dad's grave site, prayed. And say, Mom, Dad, I love you. I thank you for everything that you've instilled in me. I hear your voice in the spirit uh, from time to time. But I am leaving this place of grief. And when I divorced grief, it seemed like breath came back. My confidence came back. Started losing weight. Started feel like getting my swag back. Like everything started changing. And so if you are in a bout with grief right now, I understand. Listen, I'm telling you, when you when you lose somebody, that initial news, that that initial impact is breathtaking. But let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit loves you. God doesn't make any mistakes. Sometimes you have to no, not sometimes all the times you have to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. A lot of times people do that when they come up against a situation and then they trust. No, God says trust with everything. And so even with grief, you got to trust. You got to trust him enough to give that grief up and take his spirit and get your joy back. Now, I know that certain times of years, uh, certain times of the year, it is difficult. During the holidays, it is difficult. But let me tell you something. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Let the memories be great. Think on the good things. Think on the happy times. All right. Talk about the great stories. All right. And honor them with the fruit of your lips. Glory be to God. And so I have divorced grief. Grief is no longer a part of my life. Grief is no longer a part of my makeup. And I know that it's the tough thing to do. But you have more people living that need you than those people who are dead. I'm praying for you. Let's pray. Father God, we love you. We can't do this without you. Thank you for your strength in this situation. Thank you, God, that the people that are hearing me now are, are gaining strength, are gaining joy because of the understanding of your word. We thank you for your anointing. We can't do it without you, God. And so, God, we yield the spirit of grief and we give it to you for your words say you will give us beauty for ashes, grief. And, and that circumstance is ashes. But you give us beauty back. You give us the good times. You give us joy. You give us happiness. God, you give us an inheritance of wisdom. And we praise you now in Jesus name. If you if you uh, are watching and you know, don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Heaven is real. Hell is real. The day, the day you hear the voice of the Lord, hearten not your heart. Get saved today so that if that day ever comes, that you understand and you know where you're going to be. You can repeat after me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I repent of my sins. I turn my back on my wicked ways and I turn my heart towards you. I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord. I believe in my heart that you died for my sins and you rose on the third day 
for me today. I am saved. Amen. If you said that prayer for the first time, we want to welcome you to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, if you'd like to give, uh, listen, man, we, we are trying to get the word of God out to the world. We're trying to get out uh, the images of the kingdom of God out to the world, and we need your help. So if you would like to give, I mean, there are people, people's lives that are getting changed uh, because of your support. And so if you uh, would like to give, please give. Uh, give, uh, ask God what to give, you know, and uh, uh, you can give to uh, Cash App, dollar sign Free Life Church or paypal.me backslash um, Free Life Church. You can go to our website, freelifeexperience.org and click tab give and you can give that way. If you want to mail a check, uh, you can mail a check to 950 Eagles Landing Parkway and that's in Stockbridge, Georgia, Suite 323. Uh, zip code is 30281. We love you. And we thank you for watching this session on grief part one. Much love.